All right, guys, welcome back to the show. I'm here with the one and only Tom Bilyeu, who's the co-founder of Quest Nutrition, and now we're here at the Impact Theory Studios. Yes. So thank you so much for coming well, thank on. Thank you for having me, man. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. So I've been seeing you everywhere online. I was just speaking with Alex, and you guys seem to be just all around the web. I don't know if it's an algorithm you guys have, <laughs> but it's amazing the amount of presence you guys have, and you guys just really picked this up in... January. Yeah. So what's been that transition like going from running a billion dollar company into becoming more of a thought leader and needing to be in front of the media? What's been the biggest mindset shift for you? Um, and there actually hasn't been a mind, a mindset shift. So mm -hmm. that to me, there are universal principles to success and they're going to apply no matter what you're doing. Now, the specific skill set, obviously, is going to become very different. So there's things that I'm focused on now that I wasn't before. And there's certainly things that I, I am no longer needing to focus on, like manufacturing and things like that, which uh, was a universe unto itself and uh, really took an inhuman amount of time and energy. But this, is, this has been a lot of fun. So, And I think part of what makes going into the social realm so interesting for me, I didn't grow up with it. So, you know, millennials and Gen Z for short, like they just take it for granted. Yeah. So for them, do you know the David Foster Wallace talk, This Is Water? I don't. Absolutely fascinating. You Ooh. must go listen to it right now. Drop it into YouTube. Yeah. Anybody listening to this, trust me, do yourself a favor and listen to it. David Foster Wallace, This Is Water. And he talks about how the fish is the last person to realize that it's in water. It's so ubiquitous. It's so ever-present that you don't even see it. And that's what social media is, certainly to Gen Z and, and very much so for millennials as well, but not at all for my generation. So hmm. I didn't grow up even with the internet. Uh, and then when it started coming, like I, I didn't... I wasn't even aware of it enough to ever say, oh, this is a fad or it's not a fad. Like it was happening right as I was going to film school and I was so entrenched in that and I was so busy mm. with that that the, the sort of Cambrian explosion, if you will, of the internet happened while I had my head down and I was just working. And so it wasn't until much later that I really started getting into it and, and to really give myself context. Um, I didn't have my first computer until I was a junior in college. So wow. it, yeah. So in my first two years I had a word processor and, uh, yeah, it was, so it's totally different. So for me, I'm not slipping into some of the negativity that people have about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about that this morning on a series that my wife and I do called relationship right. theory, yeah. uh, where we, you know, just talk about all things relationships and Normally we shoot it on a Monday, but I was off filming another person's podcast up in the Bay Area. Mm. And while I was sad that I had to postpone relationship theory, which has become actually important in my marriage, let alone my business. Um, and because I was meeting these guys that I had met socially and they have an amazing podcast and we clicked and I was actually there to promote a company that I got involved with mm. through the show impact theory. Uh, if you remember the VS Ramachandran episode, yeah. so yeah. it's, it's, all this stuff coming together and knowing that I use my show to meet incredible people and then real relationships build from that. And, and I was just thinking like, man, we live in this era where you can connect with somebody across the globe, build a real relationship with them. They can then have impact on your business either by teaching you something or becoming a real like sort of biz dev relationship. It's unparalleled, man. It is unparalleled. It's, an amazing it's world. so exciting. So yeah, I'm, I, every passing day I get more passionate about social and about what we're doing at Impact Theory. And I didn't even know you went to film school. And yeah. is, would you say you're an introvert or an extrovert? <laughs> it, it all comes down to how you define it. So I suppose the most honest answer is I'm ambiverted. Mm. So I can be extroverted if I need to. But by the traditional definition of extroversion, I'm introverted. So I recharge by myself. I like to be by myself. I almost never make social plans. I basically have to be drug out to do things. And usually they have to be in service of my goals. So it's not even something that like I'm just going to go out and hang out with friends, which is, is a fascinating thing. And I'm not sure that um, I wouldn't benefit from more time with just mm. friends. Um, but do you, yeah, get, so, do you get exhausted though when you're at networking parties for yeah. multiple Not hours only do I get and... exhausted, I just want to leave. Mm. So I'm always trying to find, like when I can connect one-on-one -on -one and really, this is interesting, you're, you're making me think about this in real time. So 
either connect one-on-one -on -one or be there with fans of impact theory, I will answer questions for, I've done it for up to eight hours where I just stand in a group and I just answer the question, question after mm. question about building a business, about relationships, about mindset, about how to succeed in life, whatever that looks like being a linchpin. So that for me is the one time where I'm like, I love this so much that I could keep going and going and going. So even though that will never happen by accident, like I have to right. plan it out and know that I'm going to do it. <laughs> when I'm doing it, I'm like, this is so unintroverted of me to like really be into this. You're like surprised at yeah. yourself. Interesting. Because your biggest asset now is really being able to find great ideas, being able to filter it. So that introversion is certainly necessary. Where do you get your best ideas? Is it when you're by yourself? Is it when you're with your wife? Is it when you're well, this is, this is a very um, process-driven thing for me, and I think it's very process-driven for everybody. I just don't think most people do the process. So mine goes something like this. Uh, I go to bed very early, so I'm in bed by 9 p.m. like it's a religion, and I yeah. do that because I want to wake up early. And in waking up early, now you get this time where the world is just silent. It's still. Mm. And because I usually only sleep five to six hours a night, if I go to bed at nine, there's times I'm up at 2 a.m. But my day has started. Mm. And... That period is just incredibly rich for me. So the first thing I do is I work out, but then I immediately meditate after I work out. The meditation gives me the space to actually hear those little whispers of intuition, mm. um, which are incredibly powerful. But because intuition whispers, it never shouts, you really have to create that quiet space to hear it. And then I do something I call thinkitating, which is, so when you meditate, you get in an alpha wave state. And one of the reasons it's so powerful is the alpha wave state is uh, denoted as the one that is calm and creative. So you're in this relaxed state where your mind isn't racing, you're not feeling anxiety, and you're making these cross connections between different regions of your brain. It's very powerful for creative thinking. The problem I found was the whole point of meditation is to quiet your mind. So here I am, I'm having these amazing ideas and I want to be distracted, but I'm telling my mind, you know, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe, and trying to really focus on the part of the breath cycle that I'm in. But, and I began to resent it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm having my best ideas while I'm meditating and I'm sitting here trying to crush them down and now I'm afraid I'm going to forget and that's sort of breaking the whole point of meditating. So I thought, well, what if instead I meditate first, I really do calm my mind. I only think about my breath, but then I immediately follow it with thinkitating, where I'm going to leverage the buzz of that alpha wave state, and I'm going to set my mind to the biggest problem that I have for 20 or 30 minutes mm. and just let my mind wander on it. So whereas in meditating, I'm specifically trying not to think. During thinkitating, while I'm maintaining the breathing cycle of meditation, yeah. I'm specifically trying to let my mind wander across a problem. I don't try to force it on anything, but I'll set it loose on a problem. Sometimes it wanders far away from that. Other times it really goes right to work on that problem. And I find that I have way more creative insights into it. That has been massively, massively useful for me in terms of creativity, coming up with new ideas. Um, and then the other part of the process is this math equation that I'm obsessed with, which is ideas in equal ideas out. So I am not at all worried about thinking unique thoughts. Mm. I, I'm fully willing to admit that there are no unique thoughts left in the world. I don't, that doesn't bother me at all because there's still massive room for creativity between the thoughts, connecting unique ideas. And that's where I think the real juice is. And that's where I think any individual gets to bring their unique mind to the table and read a book, listen to a podcast, whatever the case may be, take that piece of information and let it react in your mind. And then what does it make you think of? Um, what are the parts of it that you want to adopt in your life? What are the parts that you want to discard? What are the parts that marry with other ideas that you have in your head? And you know, what are the offspring of those ideas meeting? And so that process has been very, very fruitful for me as well. And I find that Oftentimes during thinkitating, I'm actually pulling in the ideas that I've been reading. Mm -hmm. So I read voraciously. And when people ask me, like, what's the key to my success? Always be reading. And do you speed read? I speed listen. Ah. So I'm a very slow reader, but I can do audible books at 3x and retain the information. And that is really, really, really powerful for me.